So I said I was going to do a video on the monitor top when I got to working on it, and so here it is. This is a 1935 General Electric uh, monitor top type CK2 B16. This is a sulfur dioxide machine, 1 8 horsepower motor. Uh, this thing was damaged when I got it. I uh, bought it for 50 bucks, and uh, there was a line that was busted off right there. Couldn't uh, really t uh, smell any sulfur dioxide, but later on yesterday, whenever I was doing some nitrogen purging, I got that um, that dragon breath. Uh, it was pretty, pretty, pretty bad, pretty acrid, and burns the throat and lungs. It's uh, nasty stuff. I can't imagine what a full charge would smell like. So take a listen there. Should be able to hear that on the microphone. This thing has a high side float. That's the uh, metering device for it. Um, the uh, high side float is on the high side, as you would have imagined. Um, as a uh, liquid refrigerant at a high pressure builds up in that float chamber there, it picks up a float ball, and uh, that float ball is attached to a pin, and there's an orifice inside this half inch diameter steel uh, down tube. Uh, this thing was broken right here. Um, so it was going to be a very difficult thing to repair, so um, I can do metal spinning, so I made a little metal spun adapter out of copper, uh, actually just half inch copper pipe, uh, but half inch copper pipe isn't half inch, even on the inside it's a little bigger, so I had to spin it down to half inch and then spin it down to 3 16 for this tube. Um, I also I cut the tube and then I ended up using a piece of quarter inch uh, uh, tubing to uh, connect it there. Um, it's all silver soldered. Uh, because I, the steel, you had to silver solder that, so I just silver soldered everything so I can take it apart, which I did have to do, and I will explain. Um, this thing only has a, it's equipped with a uh, high side service port and requires this, uh, I think it's an Imperial kit uh, with an adapter and everything, and there's a Bristol key and all that stuff. But that's how you get into the system, uh, has a, uh, um, a valve stem that extends down through, it's adjustable. Pretty neat setup, but complicated nonetheless, lots of seals. Uh, so I added a low side um, for doing some of this work, um, and ultimately I'm gonna put in a, uh, a high side port down here too, that, so there won't uh, be any need necessarily to use that. Um, I did that by uh, cutting into this bypass line. Um, this line comes off the header of the evaporator and used to go straight up to, goes up in this, annular area here. Anyway, it loops around and goes into the side of the uh, uh, the high side float chamber. Uh, fella on the monitor top forum, very, very uh, knowledgeable people there, uh, instructed me that that was originally uh, used as a bypass to bypass the high side float, uh, uh, probably from the manufacturer. Uh, and then that was crimped shut uh, to allow to use the, uh, the metering device. Um, so, what, uh, so what I did there was just tie into the low side of that, and left the high side crimped, Whenever I'm done doing my work on this thing, <clears throat> painting, rewire, and whatnot, um, I intend to bring this one down and either have it come straight down with a high side uh, trader and then bend the low side down beside it or bend it to the side and leave this one straight. I don't know. And then connect them with some kind of clamp. Uh, so, in terms of um, actually trying to get this thing to work, I, uh, I flipped the whole unit up on its side so it's kind of tipped a little bit beyond 90, and then um, I couldn't get any nitrogen to, to push through um, the, uh, the, the float. I was thinking the float was actually stuck. Um, but uh, anyway, I, I went ahead and I did all my work, and I was you know just kind of hoping that things would come loose, and once I got some propane and stuff in there, we were loosening things up. Well, I didn't work out. Uh, last night I charged it up with propane. Uh, it is barbecue grade propane. Um, later on, if everything works out, I'm going to go to ice and butane. I intend to, uh, but it was pulling it down into a vacuum on the low side. Just wasn't working. wasn't passing anything through there. Did a lot of wrapping on the side of the float chamber. Tried a heavy magnet on it. All kinds of things. Nothing seemed to work. So today, same thing. This morning it was same thing. Um, so what I did was I. Uh, um, I took the charge out, I flipped everything over, flipped the thing completely over, um, and uh, took the Bristol key, or the, 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 um, the valve seat, which is a, takes a Bristol key to extract, um, it's a plug, uh, it's a tapered plug. Um, I took it out entirely and took a small screwdriver and, and uh, 
poked around in there and I could feel the, like you can actually see it if you shine a light in there, the shiny uh, float ball. Uh, I poked around on it a little bit and it wiggled a little bit and I kept poking on it and all of a sudden it dropped. So I thought, hey, that's great, you know, I've got that thing loose, um, but uh, I still couldn't pass any nit nitrogen through it. Um, tried to pull a vacuum, tried to push it through from the low side, push it through from the high side, you know, anything I could do um, without, you know, going to a very high pressure. I never went more than maybe 115 PSI. So um, no bueno there. Um, so what I ended up doing um, was uh, reluctantly pulled this 3 16th line. I wasn't planning on doing that until I had to uh, uh, pull all this apart and uh, to kind of refinish and repair all the wiring and everything. Um, so what I did was I pulled that and I tried to take a small uh, uh, torch tip cleaner up through there to see if I could fish around and, and uh, poke through. Uh, I think it was too big. I read on the monitor top forum um, about using uh, about the size of it, which was smaller than any wire tip cleaner I had. And I went and found a uh, uh, stainless steel wire brush pulled one of the bristles out of the wood and poked around in there, still couldn't get anywhere. So, again, I very reluctantly cut the steel tubing. Oh, well, you can see it, but there's a groove right there. Cut that tube, and it worked out pretty well to be in the right spot. It's about a half an inch from the end. Um, I can, well, I took some pictures. They'll be on a monitor top forum of the, um, the, the valve seat, and then the pin hangs from the, uh, the float. Um, I, uh, I poked it out from from the high side. I had to poke it out from the high side. And I uh, got light through there and everything. And uh, I put it back, I silver soldered it. Um, had a little bit of trouble trying to get, I had a couple of leaks and I had to do it twice. Uh, three times actually. And, um, uh, but everything sealed up, pressure tested well. Um, honestly, I probably should have cleaned this all off really well and spun a new sleeve that was longer. Um, Initially, I was going to do a longer sleeve, but I was worried about getting too much heat very high up in here, so I, I went short. Um, but yeah, that's probably what I should have done. Is, is uh, but uh, you know, and maybe I'll do that later on, um, just for a little more added strength and everything like that, because uh, not a lot of uh, metal to metal contact there. So uh, charge it with propane. Again, that's barbecue grade MD5 propane. Um, I didn't even pass through a filter. <coughs> um, actually even charged a lot of it as a liquid. Um, <clears throat> um, when I first put some liquid uh, directly into the uh, high side float chamber, um, nothing happened. I was hoping I'd get some liquid in there and I would just, you know, after a second or two here, it rushed down through. But after uh, waiting for um, 30 seconds or so, it finally, I heard it <laughs> flush down through the low side and that was a very, very good sound. I was very happy to hear that. Um, so um, I proceeded, I uh, went on once the low side came up uh, up the pressure a little bit, I went ahead and fired it up. Um, and then uh, kind of slowly fed a little bit to the low side as, as the pressure would drop and as, as I noticed it wasn't frosting up uh, completely there on the evaporator. And um, I think I'm a little bit overcharged here. So as soon as I'm done with the video, I'm gonna little bit, little bit, little, yeah, let a little bit fly. Um, in fact, I'll just push it right back into the, uh, the, high, the uh, tank here from the high side flow chamber. Let it build up some more pressure and take it out as need be. Um, so uh, I, I charged by weight, or excuse me, I didn't charge by weight because I don't have a scale right now for that uh, that tank. So uh, I pretty much just kind of, you know, winged it. Um, but everything's frosting up nicely right now. Uh, even the bottom's frosting up. At at first, uh, it was just the you know the, the side here where it comes in, and then the tray, which is where it goes next. Um, actually, it was frosting up the side a bit, but the bottom not so much. Um, propane has a tendency to carry oil, mineral oil, pretty pretty well. So uh, I'm hoping that lo you know uh, oil log issues in the evaporator 
uh, are a non-issue. Now, um, this morning I had my concerns that the float was never going to work with propane. And the reason that for, for that is um, uh, propane has a much, much lower specific gravity than sulfur dioxide. Sulfur dioxide is somewhere up there around like 1.46, um, whereas water is 1 and propane is something about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Uh, it's rather low. And this float chamber assembly was designed for um, sulfur dioxide. Um, so the thought was that, well, maybe propane just simply isn't going to be dense enough to allow uh, that ball for that weight and that volume uh, to, to rise, but uh, it seems to be working okay. So isobutane is much, much closer to the properties of sulfur dioxide with the exception of the specific gravity, which is likewise very low, similar to propane. Um, so all I can do is just kind of run this thing periodically when I'm in here working. I'm glad everything's working right now. Uh, I'm going to toy with it a, a little bit, but uh, I'm going to set the project aside for a little while because I have a heat pump to build, and uh, i got to get back to working on the, the fridge here and stuff. So i got some research and stuff to do in that regard. So, uh, hey, thanks for watching.